Hey guys, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Acoustic Silk Show. Today we have a very, very special guest. Kian Martin is in the building. And I'm so grateful you've decided to come in and share this time with us because this is actually your third time coming on the show. And I appreciate that so much. That really means a lot because I know you're busy traveling all over the world, east coast to west coast, doing your thing. <laughs> so I really appreciate you uh, coming on and sharing some time with us today. I'm so, super excited to be here. Super excited. Thank you. So this is the third time you've been on the show. So a lot of people should be familiar with you thus far. But we've also picked up a lot of new subscribers. So for those people that don't know who you are, could you go ahead and give a little brief overview? Uh, maybe talk about some of the products you've done or what you've been working on since the mm -hmm. last time. Most definitely. Um, I'm Kim Martin, a pianist, singer, songwriter. Um, hail from North Carolina, Charlotte. Hey. <laughs> and yeah, and I've been in Atlanta now for a few years, relocated here for school. And uh, it's kind of been the launching pad of my career. And um, I'm a recording artist. I do music professionally, performing, uh, touring now, which is really awesome, and um, recording. And I would say that the introduction of my music began um, probably with the Suitcase EP that I uh, released the end, towards the end of 2016. And that kind of really set the tone for me as a, you know, rising artist and um the song suitcase which was like the lead single it really really just kind of propelled me forward which i'm super grateful to mm -hmm. a lot of you on acoustic silk that may have you know become fans i'm so appreciative and um yeah everything's kind of really snowballed from the suitcase ep and so now i'm still doing music i have a lot in the works and just continuing to create my own lane you know, as everyone is. All right, excellent, excellent. So yeah, the suitcase was awesome. I thought that was really creatively uh, executed and well done. Um, Thank you. Yeah, you had a few. You had a few songs on there that I really enjoyed from that, especially especially the suitcase one because that mm -hmm. one was really about like picking up and like moving and like on yeah. like, bigger and better things. So that was awesome. But now you're coming around with your second album is this an album coming up or what What exactly is the project you have coming up so the uh project is km volume one and um it's basically going to be like eps the vision is to you know have at least two different volumes that conjoin together they would you know create an album okay um but basically they're going to be fashioned as eps that really really are going to delve a little bit more into um, me as a singer, as a songwriter, and it's definitely going to showcase a lot of the uh, growth, a lot of the evolution of me as a creative displayed in these songs. And uh, so the first one is definitely titled K in Volume 1. Okay. So are you going to you gonna release them separately or together? Or Yeah, they're going to be released separately. Okay. And yeah. how many, you know how many songs are going to be on there? That I do not know. Um, I, of course, it's always hard when you think that you've written every song specifically geared towards this body of work. Here mm -hmm. comes another <laughs> wave of ideas. Um, but I know, um, with a lot of these songs, even if they aren't released on either volume, they're definitely going to be shared, you know, eventually. Okay. Um, you've already released one single off that one. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Yeah. What's that? What's that one called? We've also released it here on uh, Acoustic Silk. Also, I think that that was last week. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, the single's called "Girl I'm on the Way," Girl which the way. Um, is a uh, really, really um, depicting um, my angle with uh, you know love and relationship. And that song was kind of inspired from personal experience and friends. And uh, I really wanted to just have a a very fresh and um, R&B-esque, soulful approach to, um, I, I would say, a more, like, popular type of vibe or groove, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that song, fortunately, a lot of people really love it. Loved it, uh, As do I. 
and um yeah that's the first record okay awesome um so yeah with your so okay with the with the success of the suitcase we're gonna go back a little bit here you did a lot of touring around the country too right mm-hmm. so can you like go into a little bit about that like how did the tour come about um and you know how did you set that up and things like that Mm -hmm. so the tour initially started in schools um always had a heart and passion for kids and um it kind of came to pass where i was just active in different schools in atlanta not officially as like a a public school teacher you know right but i was like contracted in to help facilitate master classes on voice or piano and um i just really stopped one day and thought about wow like i have all this access to these kids and um i think it was one particular time i um got requested to just like randomly perform and a part of that performance was suitcase the kids responded to it really well and it gave me the idea to just marry the worlds of coming in as you know mr martin teaching (laughs) and to me as key and martin artist performing and uh, very quickly, it just got a lot of momentum um, and support behind it. And so we started at about like, I would say, I think it was like about 12 to 15, 12 to 15 schools, somewhere around there uh, from 2016, the end of 2016 to 2017. And so uh, that began to be coupled around a lot of like spot dates in multiple cities Mm -hmm. and it just really kind of had grew legs of its own and became an official like tour situation and so this time around because of the success and um just really being present in a lot of different settings this time around it was like we had a bunch of people that were already off tops like hey what do we have to do to get you here 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 and you know we just got everything lined up and um yeah, it became a continue a continuum of uh, that tour experience from those past two years. So, did you feel like there was a lot of momentum building up, maybe like a snowball like effect with with that situation? I did, but you know, a lot of times when you're in the thick of doing something, you're just like excited to be doing it. So, mm-hmm. it just kind of felt like, oh well, I regularly perform, but now it's a lot more regular, you know? Right. And um, it wasn't until when you see the faces of like all of these children that are singing along with you and wanting to take pictures. And then you see the teachers and the other faculty and staff. And it was like, oh, wow, like people are really enjoying this, you know, and people are catching uh, wind to what I'm doing and they're looking forward to it. So it was like, oh, wow. I gradually before I realized it, I was like. Okay, there was we started at one school and now we're on like school number ten. <laughs> right. You know. So are you going to be using that a uh, similar approach for this next project? You're going to be performing at schools over the next year or so. Yeah, I, I will say um, from doing it, it really has a um, a very very unique. It creates a unique experience for me, uh, just because. It takes me back to not too many years ago, you know, being in middle school, being in high school. It was like as students, which I'm sure you can't even relate. We always kind of look forward to like special guests or those assemblies in the gym or the auditorium because it kind of, you know, just took our minds away from class for a second. And it was kind of like a leisure moment in school. Mm -hmm. Um, And to get to be that guy that is like the entertainment for that moment where it's kind of like, oh, well, he's not just entertaining us. He is an entertainer, but he's an artist, too, you know, and um, uh, I really, 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 really think that I want to at least for as long as I'm touring, I want to have a special moment to where parts of the year I go to schools, you know, and. I think a great thing I would love for it to evolve to be kind of like a a huge concert for uh, even regionally where it's like all multiple schools, you know, can come to a Coliseum or something at one time. Like, I don't know, during the day, like I have, you know, big dreams, but, you know, nothing's impossible. So, of course, of course. Yeah, Um, this is actually a really good I don't want to say hack, but Mm -hmm. it's a really good way to get some performing practice because 
you, you, I mean, you don't have to pay to perform at these places, right? Yeah, no. Like, I mean, and you're getting an audience, you're getting that practice, you're getting that stage presence. Mm -hmm. That could be a really good hack for like some other artists to think about is maybe like, you know, perform at schools if, if, if their music allows. Yeah, um, that's, that's definitely, you know, um, a key thing because I've even... It's interesting that you say that because I've had several different managers and artists and people, you know, they ask like, how did you get to do this? Like, can I be a part of your tour? Yada, yada. And um, I'm very much so a, a, a very um, open person and, you know, wanting to share the wealth, so to speak. But this time around, it's like I, I really want to, um, you know, take my music and allow it to kind of have a seat at the forefront for a second right um just because there's a lot that i, I really want to share and still fortify my own lane as you know a rising artist right and um but no it's definitely an experience where i've loved it because you know with kids they're very brutally <laughs> honest most times uh -huh. like they'll let you know if they like it they let you know if something is whack right. they'll let you know if they're enjoying it and fortunately each school it's been an extremely like warm experience like they love it mm -hmm. and um and then i think because the context of uh a lot of my music it's uh all, it, i i don't lose sight of that feel good element you know that um some of my biggest inspirations it's like you know they're super dope creatives but they just create really good music and you know good music like it's just good man and people respond to it Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's really awesome, man. And I'm, I'm glad that's been working out. Thank um, you. you also did some performances at some like clubs, it seemed like, and you, and you were doing a really mm -hmm. good job of like filming this, like putting this on Facebook. I mm -hmm. think Facebook is where I see you the most actually. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, you got a really good presence on there. Uh, so how did the, the performance at the clubs come about? And those, like, it seemed like it was really intimate setting. Like, mm -hmm. it seemed, like, how, yeah, how did all that come about? Because that seems really well done. A lot of the performances um, have sparked from uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, even. Like, I think that it's so interesting, this particular climate, um, definitely in entertainment. Like, a lot of opportunities come from online you know and of many of the people that have booked me as of late they've seen me via some way online or they've just heard of me from someone else so word of mouth you know as well and um most of those it's usually like the promoter or whoever's curating the show they'll either shoot us an email to our booking email or some people slide in dms like there's just you know extremely unorthodox ways that people you know now use to contact but it's cool because i think the power of having an online presence man like it one exposes you at a much more rapid and uh to a broader um range of people right. but it also allows people that you know can feature you on their platforms and grant opportunities they have more access to right. you you know right and um, I, I've been really, really, I've, I've loved it just because it's, it allows, um, it allows me to seize more territory. You know what I mean? Like yep. it would suck. Like I would say maybe not even like five, not even like five, six years ago, there wasn't really a booming Instagram, probably as big as it is now or, or Twitter. And, you know, if we think about the early stages of that, and it's like, if you do a dope performance at some concert and like, there's some guy that wants to book you, but they don't get a chance to speak to you. It's kind of like, dang, like, when am I going to see them again? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, man. That Yeah, that's awesome. You're doing you're doing great things on the internet because I see you all the time on Facebook. And that's pretty mm -hmm. much how I keep up with what you're doing and what's going on is, is through yeah. Facebook, um, which is awesome. Uh, yeah, so I guess, I guess you'll be planning on doing that this upcoming uh, year after the album comes out. I mean, the EP comes yeah, out as well. Definitely definitely okay so uh i want to touch base on one thing that i thought was awesome was the grammy situation mm -hmm. so how, how did you attending that come about and how did that whole situation come about wow so um the grammys totally is still one of the greatest highlights of my career thus far which um 
I think um, it it really, really on so many levels, man, was eye opening because while there, you know, the kid version of myself was so excited because I've seen this show all my life. Right. And, you know, now I get to be in attendance. It was like, oh man, like this is a full circle moment. But um, it came about um, by way of a dear friend of mine that she works for the company uh, TuneCore, which I don't know oh. if you know, but TuneCore yeah, is... Yeah, I see them come like up a, on my uh, YouTube whenever yeah, I Yeah, like TuneCore is a very, very popular um, online um, music distributor where they basically place your music live to all of the different music outlets and streaming service providers. But from a conversation from her at the Atlanta office here, you know, she was just talking to me about the Grammys and kind of um, enlightening me to more about the association. Because to my knowledge, I thought the Grammys were just this super elite and prestige award show where, you know, you have to have records that are chart toppers and right. you have to be nominated to clearly win. And if you win, you attend. I, I, I didn't know that there was so much more to the organization than just what we see that one time a year, right. you know? Right. And um, it's a super active um, and a very staple uh, platform for music in general that does a lot behind the scenes to advance music education and uh, rights for artists and producers and creatives. And so um, she basically connected me with um, uh, two people in Atlanta that spearheaded the Atlanta chapter. Mm -hmm. And I connected with them and next thing, you know, like I get an invitation in the mail, <laughs> you know, um, about wow. attending. And um, it was, it was, it was really, and it still is. I mean, I, even on my worst days, like when I'm, you know, I'm feeling a little bit of discouragement or, you know, like the ups and downs of pursuing any dream or any career. Right. It's like, I have to remind myself, like, can you went to the Grammys, you know, that's, and um, I have to shout out my music industry professor from college, Mr. Thrash. I had a conversation with him and he told me, he was like, you know, man, no matter how hard it, it gets, everything that you've ever told me that you want to accomplish, you're doing it. And he was like, think like how many people around the world, let alone, you know, in Atlanta, Georgia, got an invitation to the Grammys That's and facts. went, That's you know, facts. and, and it was like, wow. Like, and, and so, you know, all of those are just, you know, statements that I feel like you're making great steps in the right direction, you know? Yeah. And um, yeah, so the Grammys came by way of a friend at TuneCore and she connected me um, with the actual um, people that are over the Atlanta chapter. And uh, before you know it, we were working out all the details of me getting there and it was awesome. <laughs> what, what would you say What would you say was one of the most eye-opening things about, about attending? Wow. Well, there are tons. Um, one of the, I would, I'll, I'll say a couple. Okay? Um, okay. So the first, definitely there's a whole week's worth of events surrounding it from performances to mixers to all types of shows. And um, that was really incredible because it was every, man, every musician, artist, creative probably known to mankind that's in entertainment was there you know and so imagine just having the access to be in those circles and meet new people and network and connect with people and um that was truly humble because i was received really well you know and there were some people that uh weren't familiar with me but they got familiar and they were they really really loved what i had to do and there were some people that were in fact familiar so that was really you know kind of shocking but cool as well that's awesome yeah and um then i would say another eye-opening thing um that i think really still to this day um really impacted me was the day of the show where my seats were um i was literally sitting adjacent to the stage where it was kind of like I was on like the second level, which was really cool, but I was like adjacent to the stage where I could actually see behind the stage. Okay. So I could literally see each artist and, you know, um, 
personality that came to introduce performance or right. um, announce a category. I could see everything basically that was happening backstage before it happened. And it, it, it in many ways, it I thought that it was, um, you know, kind of divine because I was like, wow, it's like I'm seeing where I'm going to be. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? So that experience itself was like, wow. That, that's that's really dope. That's really cool to see. So when you so when you go to these, so you were there for the whole week beforehand. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, I mean, what what is that like? I mean, are are all these like big name people just like walking around, like you know, what what is that like? I could, I can't even imagine this. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a it's a it's a little bit of that. It was hosted this year in New York, so right. it was freezing cold. Oh geez. So for the most so for the most part, um, you know, I mean it's New York, New York is super busy. Um, but throughout the week there are tons of events that people are having throughout the day that um a lot of, you know, your favorite artists and musicians and producers, they're more than likely covering, you know, um their rounds of attending a lot of those events. So yes, in the capacity of um just being there, you're bound to run into this person and see that person and rub shoulders. Um, but it's it was it's usually like um, throughout the day, like you'll just have an itinerary and go to different events, and you really don't necessarily know who you're going to see, which is kind of fun because it's like, oh wow, like I just saw you know, this person and, um, they have this record out and some of the events, they actually are, ba uh, built around a lot of like record labels. They have events right. that are highlighting their artists and some perform, some artists are having their own events. So it's, it's really cool because, um, in itself, it's a, a very unique experience where it's like, man, it's kind of like, I, as a, I thought, in the mind of like a child partially of being there it's like it feels like the greatest musical field trip <laughs> right <laughs> you know what i mean right so like these artists are like walking around like you can like talk to them like you could like pull like future to the side and like talk to him like yeah yes and no like you know i i will say i was so fortunate that i didn't have like any negative experiences where somebody was standoffish or you know they had like these security teams that were just you know blockading them like seal team um, six coming after you <laughs> right exactly <laughs> for the most part like everybody was very friendly you know um now of course at some some particular venues like if it was like a concert you can't necessarily like just walk up to a person if they're like sitting in their own area or whatever but um for a lot of like the mixers and social gatherings like there were a lot of people that were just there you know and um, they was really cool to see just as excited as I was to meet a lot of them. They're excited to meet new people as well, you know? Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Huh. I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect that. I would expect that they would be interested just to meet like either the people they know or like, like the, the famous people or the hot artists at the time. Right. And, 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 and I kind of had that like misconception too, but what it reminded me of, it reminded me of like a homecoming or like schools because a lot of them if you think about it they're 12 months out of the year they're super busy with their own you know tours right. they have their own clothing lines brands you know they evolved into being these walking enterprises themselves so at award shows i begin to see wow like this is the one moment where they are actually getting to see their peers you know and it's kind of to me, it reminded me of like going to my college's homecoming where all your friends that you see, you see each other online, but this is the first time, you know, throughout the year that you've gotten to see and catch up on person. So in person, so everybody was, was just really friendly. Like the vibes were like so perfect. Like there was just so many good vibes. Huh. Okay. I guess next, next time they need to do it in a warm weather place like LA. Right. So, so and yeah, and, and usually they have it in L.A. Yeah. And so um, I'm not sure if they're going to have it in uh, next year in L.A. or not, but um, usually they do have it in L.A. Okay. So, uh, yeah, here's another question for you. How how can a regular person go to the Grammy Awards? Like you, you, you had your friend who, like, you know, kind of helped you out with that. Like, how, how can someone like me who's not as well connected go to the Grammy Awards? Mm -hmm. 
Like even well, if I have to pay. So the negative is, <laughs> it is an invite only. <laughs> It situation. is okay. Okay, okay. It is definitely an invite only situation. Okay. Um so I better make some friends then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, um, but I me being the type of guy I am I, I, I just love like meeting people in general and you and there were I met several people that kinda of were like interning for the Grammys, they work for the Grammys. Okay. But it definitely is invite only. Okay, so you can intern, maybe get become friends with an intern. I guess if you work for a label, then you probably get some tickets. Yeah. Um I'm sure. I'm sure it just depends on, but I know that there are tons of people that attend the actual show, you know? So um, I'm sure um, of just getting some type of musical involvement, like you just never know. Everything can change in a conversation. You know, it did for me, <laughs> for meeting them, yeah. Did you see any like, um, like any like YouTubers there? YouTubers. Um, well, I guess it'd be kind of hard to tell. Like, me, like, like, uh, maybe some of the bigger channels. Yeah, uh, I get. But they I'm really, sure that they I really did. Do this. I, th I think that I'm, I'm almost positive that I did. The only thing I think from the challenges from meeting so many people, you know, it's kind of like after a while, it's like everything kind of was like a little bit blurry. Right. But I'm sure that I did because I know a lot of. They would have like a lot of YouTubers, a lot of just personalities in general. Like when I say that every part of entertainment was there, like they literally were. They Many people were hosting their own events. They were having all types of uh, galas and honoring different artists, honoring companies. So I'm sure that I definitely did see a few people. Okay. Yeah. So, if, so you would definitely recommend it to everyone to go if they ever get a chance? Absolutely, I, I think um, I think that going to the Grammys it it'll it's a life changing experience because it's like the equivalent of you know well it is the equivalent for music um, as in with um, acting the Oscars you right. know it's exactly. like the highest award show um, honor and it's truly a it's truly a life changing experience because you get to really watch all the magic happened that we witnessed on tv for years you know there yeah there it is yeah. i remember watching all those a lot of grammys in my, in my day as a mm -hmm. kid um yeah it's, it's awesome man so that's awesome you got to go and experience that hopefully you'll be going back more often absolutely <laughs> that's the hope yeah that's the plan right yeah okay awesome so uh yeah the, the grammys were in new york but you recently got back from L.A. And I know mm -hmm. you've been traveling back and forth to L.A. a lot over the past year. So what, what's that been like? What's What's been going on in L.A. for you? So L.A. is always major love. Like, yes. I, I, I love that city so much. Me too. I'm and, a big fan. Um, yeah. And I, it's really been, um, I would say... Uh, different moments and instances of me spreading my musical wings from recording out there to performing out there. Um, most recently I attended ASCAP's Expo, which is a huge music convention um, where they have a lot of artists and musicians and songwriters and producers and creatives in general. They basically are all gathered together um, for this huge three-day conference where they have um, musical heavyweights come and share their experiences on panels. There's a lot of networking. There's a lot of performing. There are um, all types of music organizations that are giving uh, seminars and they're having um, discussions and um, all types of just insightful conversations about the progressive music and ever-changing music industry. Yeah. And, um, while there, I got to participate in that as well as perform and I uh, was in the studio as well. And so um, in a great way, it's like I, I've been building, <laughs> I'd like to say, I guess, my third home base, you know, <laughs> out there. Right. Um, and it's it's been fun because, you know, having a presence in New York, Atlanta and L.A., um, I think, uh, in my opinion, I think are three probably top places of course you, you still have nashville as well but i know for an urban 
artist as myself, like those three markets are really, really, um, you know, just huge for um, artists like myself to have budding careers in. Right. Yeah. So uh, I know you've talked about potentially moving out to L.A. Um, is that still on your radar? Yes. L.A. is so expensive. <laughs> yes. It's ridiculous. It's so expensive. But, um, I, you know, I'm, 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 the, I'm the type of guy where it's like when, when I feel that like tugging to go, I'm at least going to frequent it more until, you know, everything gets aligned where I transition out there. And even if it's a six month to a year move, like I'm so open to it, you know, just because I think that in my, in, in my career as, a, as an artist, as a musician, I'm already on the go so much. So why not, you know, experience relocating somewhere else, living right. somewhere. Now, the time frame on that, I'm not totally sure, but I definitely um, am going to continue to frequent it pretty often. Mm -hmm. But I would love and, you know, be open to a move in the near future for sure. Okay. So, yeah. Um, what, yeah, what do you, what kind of things do you think that would do for your career? Because you're based in Atlanta right now. Mm -hmm. which obviously people know Atlanta is a pretty is a hub for music pretty much mm -hmm. um especially with like the the blowing up of trap music and I know that's not that's not really what you do but mm -hmm. people know Atlanta's a hub so how do you think moving to LA would be any different than you know continuing your career at Atlanta or maybe even moving to a New York mm -hmm. well LA I I'm, I really, really view it as like the nucleus of entertainment because my first times going there, it's like I got to see firsthand how movies uh, and television and music all literally connect and how multiplied the opportunities are out there, you know, because there's so many uh, legitimate companies that this is where they were created. And, you know, they have so much access to getting an artist booked on um, having their music licensed for this particular movie or this show. And then, you know, there's other platforms to perform and a lot of tour companies are out there. A lot of agencies are out there. Right. And I think that's a huge change uh, from Atlanta specifically. Um, just because Atlanta is definitely evolving and growing and it is awesome, awesome launching pad itself but i think they differ in the capacity where la it literally has every pillar of entertainment is there right you know and i um i definitely have a, a lot of uh aspirations of wanting to experience getting in film getting in tv you know um acting is not necessarily my greatest strong suit but it's definitely a world that i want to grow i want to experience working with the acting coach and experience you know getting cast in different films or television and also having music um placed in film and tv as well and i think yep. just being out there it'll open my eyes to even more opportunities that i didn't even realize that i you know had um the ability to kind of enter into yeah there's definitely a certain magic to la for the up-and-coming artists because you know, you're, a lot of people are out there are artists themselves, producers, whatever. And, you know, you're just rubbing shoulders with them in the streets. And, you know, next thing you know, you guys are working on a project together and, you know, experimenting with some new music and, you know, learning about different things. Mm -hmm. So I, I definitely mm -hmm. myself see L.A. as something that's good for up and coming artists as well. Mm -hmm. um, but typically the artists that want to move out to L.A. aren't aren't living in a, in a hub like Atlanta also. So. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> But yeah, LA, LA is awesome. Besides, the weather is awesome too. Yeah, no, the weather is weather is like perfect. It's perfect, man. <laughs> it's like perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, w would you be starting from scratch if you moved out there? I mean, I know you've got your team in in uh, Atlanta mm -hmm. and the people that you work with and stuff. Do you have people out there that you currently work with? I would say now I do have a few people out there. I have a lot of. Uh, friends that are you know artists and musicians right as well so i don't necessarily think it would be starting from scratch i definitely think that it'll be starting 
um, fresh. And I, I guess that kind of differs in the capacity of my presence is nowhere near as cemented out there as it is in Atlanta. But I do have somewhat of a um, somewhat of a relevancy i would say there just because i have a lot of peers that are familiar with me so it'll be very easy i think to transition into the performance circuit because i performed there a couple times and you know it's kind of like that new school syndrome where it's like when you're the new guy everybody is kind of like oh wow like who's that new kid you're, you're naturally noticeable you know right. what i mean right. and every time i go to la they're like oh there's that guy like he's performing and it's like well when are you performing again it's like i don't know but next time I perform, it's like people are more inclined to come because it's like, it. oh, wow, like he's dope. You know what I mean? Got it. Got it. So um, I think that it'll be a very fresh experience, but I don't think I'll have, you know, much trouble um, creating a lot of uh, traction there. And, um, you know, I, I think the plus will be from being planted in a city like Atlanta for a while. Man, I, I've just really grown even beyond just being a musician and an artist just as a young businessman you know there's so many business ventures that i want to delve into that i know la has a lot of avenues where you could find success in that so okay yes yeah. Spe speaking of business um i know a lot of up-and-coming artists i guess struggle with like you know the the difference between like doing music and then like is it like viable like financially am i able to get by doing music Mm -hmm. um how do you i guess negotiate negotiate that dilemma like yeah because i i don't you're not doing music full time yet now but you do a lot of music so how, how are you negotiating that difference like how are you making ends meet so a lot of it uh stems from with the tour and with me um teaching a lot of master classes with voice and piano. I fortunately, every day I wake up and go to bed, like I'm doing something relative to music, right? Um, you know, making income. And I've really, really found uh, a lot of, um, a lot of clarity, even with doing that, like with me balancing voice students, piano students, and going to these schools and doing master classes and then touring in a school and, um, you know, having private students, some adults even, it's taught me how to be um, very much so a master of balancing multiple facets and multiple streams, you know, awesome. which that really goes directly into any business where you have to wear multiple hats. Even being the head honcho, the CEO, like there's always a saying of, having multiple streams of income and in my own way now I'm learning how to balance and make money in multiple ways but I found a way to make all of them connect to music you know and um, I think that's always an awesome awesome joy because I never have to take off the hat of being the artist really you know I'm as the artist I'm now getting to cultivate that art and that music in a child or in an adult or even in the lecture type setting of, you know, facilitating a master class. Yeah. Ian, you are you are dropping so many gems right now. It's amazing. Like I've oh. lit I've literally <laughs> never never heard that Thank before you. from from any guest. Um, uh -huh. talking about the teaching in the master class. And I'm sure mm -hmm. when you perform at these schools, that's a potential to get even more cl more clients. For your business. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and that's why, you know, of course, I think that we've all, and I think we've all had, and there's no harm in it, we've all had like those just kind of one-sided dreams, as I would call it, of, hey, I just want to be this actor, I want to be this doctor or this lawyer or whatever, which there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm, I'm learning so much, it's like, okay, with life, some of my greatest influences that I tell people are Will Smith, Martin Lawrence, John Legend, and um, who was the other one? Will Smith, Martin Lawrence, John Legend, Jamie Foxx. Sorry. Oh yes. Um, and I and I use them as examples for me because if you really think about the scope and the course of their careers, what have they not been able to touch in entertainment? You know, and it's like I use that as my benchmark 
of my personal success like i aspire to have careers in the likeness of them but i have to start where i am currently and where i'm currently i'm learning okay with everything that i'm doing as an artist there's so many other facets that just me being a singer and a songwriter there's so many other facets that that can branch off to and so now i'm seeing even with working with kids these kids are becoming fans and now having music that children like that their parents like they're like oh well i like it too because you're entertaining my kids so now you know you have the tours that students go to and the teachers and then you have the other shows that are in you know probably 18 and up venues where parents are coming to the shows wow then that's amazing. you have a lot of the students, they'll come up saying, well, well, hey, Mr. Martin, can you help me with my voice? Can you help me with this? And, you know, you have a, I think we all know that when um, a child really likes something and you have more, majority of the times parents are super supportive, especially in like the kind of elementary, middle school uh, window and high school, some too. It's like parents are always looking for extracurricular everything to put their children through. And so for a guy like me, where I've now performed in a school, performed for the parent, began to cultivate a relationship. And now they're like, well, hey, I would love for you to give my child piano or voice lessons because they're interested. And, you know, there there's already three different streams of income personally for myself that I've wow. been able to have. But also the three different, you know, veins that I'm learning to be a great just businessman in, you know, and that's amazing. Um, I, I've used that kind of as my personal template to get me to those levels of like Will Smith, Jamie Foxx, Martin Lawrence, John Legend, because I just I love the way that they have taken their careers and they have really um, just built so much more from the start of what they were known by, you know, mm -hmm. um, they entered the game in one way and it's like now they have so many hats that they wear and they're successful at so key and that that's that's truly revolutionary what you just said because a lot of people they work like another job let's say they like do uber or something and then they do music mm -hmm. with the other part of their time what you've effectively done is been able to like always be working on music and still get by so you're able to like double down and triple down on your skills you know, Absolutely. getting better at what you want to do and make money at the same time. So, wow, that is Absolutely. awesome. I'm literally Thank taking you. notes over here. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank I'm you. I'm literally taking notes over here because that is, that is awesome. I don't think anyone has really put it like the way you did, you just did mm -hmm. over the past like 10 minutes. And wow. In fact, I might, I might clip that section and just run that, run that um, as a video in, in itself. And then we'll have yeah. the entire thing, man. That, yeah, like, that was awesome. Oh man, no, no problem. I, I just, I, I think that, especially in, in like our present world where they like say like, you know, our age demographics, specifically the millennials, we're like rebels. There are so many people, it's like, you kind of have your mind made up on how you see your career and your life. You may not have all your ducks in a row, so to speak, but mm -hmm. you're very, very well acquainted with what you can do well, what you can't do so well. And you have an idea of what you want to do long term. And I think I've just kind of learned how to take everything that I've been given and exhaust all the possible routes of uh, not just making a living, but also sewing into what my dream is, which is to be a you know very successful and established artist. And I think with anyone, whatever the gifts that we're given in life, I think we have to just, you know, always, you know, give your talent and your skills a purpose. Like, what is the purpose for these gifts that I have? And give whatever your dream is direction. Mm -hmm. Really, really, really articulate what your dream is and what are the different routes. Because you're always going to have, you know, a lot of steps forward, a few steps back. But if you align everything, eventually each step is going to reiterate what the dream is, you know. And for me, I'm so thankful because every day of my life it's reiterated. Oh, well, this is Ken Martin, the artist that is teaching me, that is performing, that is, you know, engaging with me. And it's um, I don't have to take that hat off and go into a whole nother world and morph into you know just doing a job or something that i don't want to do right there it is <laughs> you know yeah there it is 
All right, so I want to I want to shift gears from that a, just a little bit because um, mm-hmm. I know we've seen I, I think on YouTube and maybe in, yeah Instagram as well a little behind the scenes action of you like recording in the studio. Mm-hmm. So I want to talk about your team. Who like how do you develop a team like because a lot of people are you know doing this themselves they they make their music on their computer they mix maybe they have like a friend or something doing this but you've got like a legitimate team that you work with to. Uh, you know, I guess adv- advance this this dream. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us about how you founded that team or how that team came about? Yeah, so uh, I would say the development of my team has probably been over the scope of about, I would say three to four years. So it's definitely taken time. Um, just because within that time, I think that um, I had a lot of clarity on who I was and where I wanted to go and what I wanted to do. But there's a lot of um, just woodshedding, I would say, that goes on with refining who I am as an artist, uh, the type of energy that I can work with, the type of energy I can't work with, what I need at this time to progress my career onward, and even chipping away at what I think I need, but I really don't need. and so it really has progressed now to, you know, my manager, uh, Jordan uh, Brewer, shout out to him, um, a publicist, Jamika Winton, who's based in Charlotte, my music director, um, and another friend here, Chris Phillips, who he aids in, you know, uh, doing a bunch of different PR things and uh, creative directing as well. And really those uh those four people, and a lot of times when I perform, I have maybe a few other friends that'll just casually help as like doing some personal assisting or stage managing. But really, those four people, um, they came, man, through years of just meeting people. And, you know, some people were flaky, some people weren't. It's no love lost. It's just, I think, you know, at the end of the day, life is a journey and you recognize what works for you and what doesn't. Right. But um, I think now it's at a point from, having a lot of success and uh, just being consistent as an artist you know that in itself is a huge feat because there's you'll hear about an artist today and in two months or five months to a year it's kind of like what happened to this person where are they but i've just always told myself let me be consistent even if all the pieces of the puzzle aren't coming together find a way to be consistent because people see that and people like to support entities that are consistent you know and i think with my with my team uh for the most part all of them except for jordan my manager i've known for a minimum of three years so we've already been acquainted but i think we just kind of realized our individual skill sets and we had a common goal and it kind of gelled us together you know and um it was it was very evident uh, going to the Grammys even like the whole team went to the Grammys and um, it was like we got so much good feedback from a lot of people they were like wow like every time we've seen you at an event we see like your team and everybody's just on it everybody's really kind and cordial and it huh. just really looks good you know of course and so um, I think we just learned as a team to be there for one another even beyond just the um uh, beyond the sense of what most people see as like okay you see an artist on stage and you know that he has a lot of helping hands great but what is that team doing off stage behind the scenes yeah and um yeah okay excellent um so yeah obviously you guys spend a lot of time in the studio uh recording or you do a lot of the inner the musicians that i interview you know spend a lot of time on their computer like in their room their dorm room or whatever making music how do you get in the studio? How do you get studio time to make your records? How do I get the studio time? Yeah, how do you get the studio mm-hmm. time? How are you, yeah, how are you getting the studio time? Uh, thankfully, I have a great brother who's an awesome producer, Scotty Glaze, who I've been working with. Hold um, up. He's your for... biological brother. No, he's, he's uh, oh. not my biological, but we're just close like brothers. Got it, got yeah. it, got it, got it. Okay. Uh, but he is my North Carolina brother because he's okay. from... Carolina as well. There you go. Yeah. He's from Charlotte. <laughs> no, he's. Uh, I think. I think Scotty's actually from where um, you're at now. I think he's from Raleigh. Are you? I think he okay. Is. All right. Yeah. Cool. 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 
Um, but from him, he's been a huge just asset because he knows a lot of different engineers, a lot of different studios. And so most of the studios we're in now usually comes by way of his recommendation of knowing somebody that's there and, um, you know, connecting with the manager, booking out particular hours at a time and um, going in and recording. Okay. And um, man, I'm an artist that I, I don't like to do a lot of uh, lollygagging in the studio. Like I, mean, I like you're paying for that time. And, so <laughs> yeah, like, you know, s- some situations like it's like, okay, if you're not paying the tab and somebody else is, or it's just like, you know, a random session. Cool. But uh, even if I'm paying and if I'm not, it's like, I just like being productive, of you course, know, and, of course. Um, I enjoy that energy when it's on of man, chilling with the producer and really really allowing the lyrics to take the sounds and the instrumentation to life and um yeah so a lot of it's come by way of uh, my producer who was recording recently okay so yeah i've never been into a studio situation before Mm -hmm. but what is i guess like how much does it cost to get some studio time i've never looked into it before so it varies um a person like me that's very resourceful um, I paid as much as like, you know, 50 to $60 an hour to as little as free, <laughs> okay. you know, an hour. Um, but you, you want to look at it all. Honestly, man, it's all for investing in yourself. For sure. You know, I, I think having a dream, it's one of the most amazing and not so amazing things because a lot of times you feel like you lose a lot of money. Because you're putting a lot of money into something that you don't always instantly see the fruits of whatever Mm -hmm. that, you know, expense was. But, um, yeah, studio prices vary. and But I always look at it as an investment, ultimately. Okay. Because, um, yeah. So, Mm -hmm. you mentioned a great word that I know a lot of up-and-coming artists like, and that is free. So, do you have any tips and tricks for, like, how you can, like, get, like, cheap studio time? Are there like any times of the day where they're like offering like discounts on studio time or like cheaper opportunities to get in there? Well, I would say the number one tip is you have to network. I think that's a word that we hear so much, but I don't know if um, a lot of aspiring artists fully, fully, fully internalize what that means. Mm -hmm. You know, networking for me is more than just uh, meeting somebody. Hey, how are you? Let's exchange contact. But you know, you don't follow up. I think most of the world's phones are filled with numbers that we've gotten that we don't use. That's true. (laughs) You know, and it starts with the old fashioned way of genuinely getting to know someone. And um, I would say always take the angle too of um, going the extra mile and seeing how can you be of assistance to a studio, to an engineer? They're constantly working on projects. They may need a singer as a reference singer to reference some tracks. Ooh. And that could be an exchange for free studio time. Or they may just be looking for someone to come and aid in a writing session. And, hey, if you can help me write some of these records, we can kind of do like a barter system. And I yes. can give you, you know some free studio time. So there's all types of avenues to really, really, I would say... Uh, bargain when it comes to um getting that free or that 25 dollars an hour but i think a lot of people don't go the extra mile to actually cultivate a relationship you know what i mean like we live in a world where everybody wants to use 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 and i I get it we have to use one another but i think you want to use a situation or a relationship in a way where you're actually honoring it and it's not just coming across, hey, you only need me to do this service, you know? I love that. I love the barter. I've loved the barter for a long time. And I think yeah. it's really good for music, for artists because a lot of times people have multiple skills. Like you're 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 an instrumentalist. Like you can, you can do that. You can sing on tracks. There's a lot of yeah. things you can do. You can write. Um, then you could trade that for studio time or whatever you need. Yeah. Um, that's that's awesome. That's a, that's another great tip. That's that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I definitely appreciate that. Oh, definitely. Wow. No problem. Wow. I'm, I'm gonna need to have you on for like a whole another hour, man. <laughs> just, just, <laughs> uh, 
So yeah, so okay, so we talk about the team, and then I, I've got just a couple more questions, and then because mm. we we've been on for almost an hour here, um, I can't even believe it's been that long. I know, right? But so you've got a team. Who was the first person that somebody should, you know, reach out to to become part of their team? The first person. I, I guess this, what's the first step? Just, um, I think that you should really, really get with someone. Um, either a manager or a publicist. But I think a lot of people, they look at it as a manager is the person that snatches me up and they make me a star. They make me successful. They make me live my dreams. And it's not the case. Like a manager's role is to really oversee all of the activities of you, the artist. But if you aren't really fortifying your product, which is yourself, your music, your performance, your creativities, your songs. If you aren't putting a lot of energy to that, they don't really have something to manage. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, I think a lot of times managers kind of evolve from think about the people that naturally support you the most, people that are rooting for you, that are championing you. um, And then think about, hmm, is this an individual that you could see yourself investing time with and vice versa? Because a manager is a person, like I talk to my manager multiple times every day, Okay, you know, um, and it's not always just about music. We just have fostered a great relationship dynamic. Um, and those people, managers and publicists, you spend a lot of time with, because a publicist even, their job is to take the product you as the artist and to literally make it trend make it explode make it attractive create a story around it push it and make it appealing to your audience and audiences that they think could attach themselves with you and help build your career okay and um i think those are those are two critical parts but even before trying to uh, go through the hassles of ironing out a publicist and a manager you want to make sure that you are refined as the talent where you have something that is viable you know even if you don't know how to do everything if you have a voice to sing or uh you spit great rhymes and lyrics like you want to have a popping popping product and it doesn't have to be you know a a 12 song album a five song ep if you can fashion at least a song or something tangible that you can present to them because ultimately it means nothing to have a manager and a publicist but there's no product to work or manage you know that's more so just a person that believes in you but at some point there has to be productivity in creating who is this because we all know we listen to music but artists are boiled down to songs on apple music songs on spotify songs on google play like that's the tangible product and then those songs propel tours propel performances propel festivals but none of that would exist without the music yeah you know yep okay so to just wrap it up here Mm -hmm. um i typically ask this question i know at least twice before but we're gonna see if you got anything different for us today Uh um any last tip that you may have for any up and coming artist, uh, you know, just just anything it could be about anything. The business, like booking shows, um, you know, mm-hmm. traveling, studio time, whatever, whatever you got. Any last tip? Yeah, I would say uh, if you and I, I don't know. I feel like I may have said this before. If you can be consistent, you can be great. And I don't even mean that to sound like a a quote from like a shaman or a <laughs> stage or something, but. Yeah. I live by that, man. Like, whatever your vision and dream is, whatever they are, if you can be consistent, you can be great. Like, even if you don't have everything ironed out, you have to take what you have and find a way to be consistent. Because when you're consistent, you always will be able to be relevant because you're going to naturally know, okay, what are people responding to? What aren't they responding to? You know, what are the strong suits of me as an artist and what aren't? 
because that consistency you're now putting yourself where you're always going to be present basically you know and man that that's literally the testament to everything that i'm doing now like i found a way from when i landed in atlanta freshman year 2009 to you know going on now like it's literally almost 10 years it's nine years now with it being um you know 2018 it's like Mm -hmm. wow like I, I've actually found a way to be very, very consistent and people have latched onto it. They follow me. And I, I think that's the main piece of advice I would give artists. You gotta be consistent and spend time with yourself, cultivate that product. Mm-hmm. And um, man, you'd be surprised how people are gonna start responding to you. There, there it is. My old, my old uh, high school football coach used to say, consistency is the key to a champion. So yeah, kind of like the same thing. Yeah. So yeah. Seriously. Seriously. There it is. Um, I appreciate you so much, Kian, for coming on. I appreciate it. Uh, first time, third guest on the show. So, Absolutely. So hopefully there will be many more. You 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 graced us with so many gems today. Um, oh man, I appreciate Thank it. You. Can you let people know real quick where they can find you? Yes. So on all social media um, at k-e-e-y-e-n-m-a-r-t-i-n that's my first and last name kian martin and my website kianmartin.com everything is pretty easy from there um and i'm on all social media so yeah check me out okay yeah obviously we're gonna put all that in the description as well if you're still listening now um and i'll probably put that in the the front of the video too flash that a couple times so people know all right thanks again kian Be the one to let you go. I love you from my heart and 